small recap that till now we have seen probability and probability mass function with respect to a discrete random variable that means we are having a function x uh, from omega that means sample space to omega x and omega x is a very special kind of set that happens to be a countable collection of random numbers a countable set that means we are putting as a sequence of random number single sequence of random number x k so we had already seen that and based on that we come up with the probability mass function that means a small uh, p kind of function a small p so it was what it was a function from where to where what was the domain what was the domain are you able to recall borel algebra of sigma x sigma uh, sorry om, om, omega x and what was the range close interval 0 to 1 and you know that uh, what is borel algebra of sigma x i had already simply say that it it is a collection of subset of omega x and which pulls back to sigma omega under the uh, inverse image of x under the inverse process that means it pulls back x x is mapping uh, omega to omega x then if you write x minus to the power minus 1 that we call it pulls back pulls back operator or pulls back map pulls back to uh, sigma algebra of omega see what is sigma algebra of om omega uh, don't go in a very abstract math call it collection of all possible events what is collection of all possible event collection of all possible events i am not talking about uh, subset possible events okay this one is sigma algebra and every relation you had already seen then we had defined third concept that means uh, uh, if you are talking about uh, various observation of a discrete random variable then how you will get a representation of those numbers there are various numbers can we get a single representation the single representation is coming from expectation of the corresponding random variable then you say that uh, say that expectation is a single number then how it will talk about uh, all possible observation of the random variable that means how variability is there so variability is discussed by various variance of the discrete random variable so everything we had already all these we have already discussed okay various variance is also a, a special kind of expectation now same thing here we will discuss situation in continuous random variable situation will change that means we are taking a random variable here omega x is no more a sequence of random numbers what is it is it is not a single sequence of random numbers it is continuum of random numbers continuum that means omega x contains some kind of intervals it is no more a countable set omega x is no more a countable set so here in that case we will call the corresponding random variable is a continuous random variable so situation would be the here it is no more a, a single sequence of random numbers that means it is a continuum set we are unable fail to write omega x in term of a single sequence or a, in in term of a countable set so we say that it is continuum in nature in short we will call it is continuum in nature that points come in continuum in nature that means if you take any two different point between those two different point there would be infinitely many points density theorem that we call it uh, and uh, 
there are various other things what you call it continuum simply you can say that it contains interval continuum set what does it mean it contains interval continuum or continuous set continuous is little bit uh, uh, what uh, abstract thing but when you call it continuum set it give more uh, local meaning continuum set continuum in nature that means contains intervals in short you can say that contains intervals or union of intervals or various intervals contains intervals that is meaning of continuous random variable so if you are having uh, a random variable which is taking value in continuum fashion the random number then how you will define uh, probability distribution there it is simply similarly inspired from uh, that computing mass of a continuous body so uh, in order to compute mass of a continuous body what formula you are using uh, what formula you are using how you are computing mass integration you are uh, now next time uh, saying that if it is a continuous body then it uh, take a space it will take a, sp uh, a space some kind of so how that a space we call it volume how you compute volume of a continuous body how you compute what is the volume of a continuous body mass time density have you heard that formula or not? Mass time density. So density will come here. So density term here actually uh, likewise uh, in volume complete body is spread it. Likewise what a space will take probability will be spread it. So if you are willing to compute probability in a volume how you, uh, you will compute their probability density function will come there. Probability density function. So probability density function that continuous for continuous body. So, discrete random variable takes uh, either finite or countably infinite number of values that we call it random number, countab countable random numbers, okay. But a continuous random variable, it takes uncountably infinite number of values. That means omega x is uncountable set. For example, if you talk about height, weight kind of things, how if you may, uh, going to measure uh, height of uh, person, uh, students in this uh, institute, what kind of value height will take whether you will say that uh, height of a person is uh, 5 inch or sort of 5 foot or something like that 5.5 .5, something like that you are you are saying like exactly 5.5 .5 or 5 or uh, 5 5.6 or 6.1 uh, uh, something like that are you getting that kind of measurement uh, are you getting measurable like 5 6 7 8 9 kind of things what kind of measurement of height you are getting if you are measuring in feet what kind of measurement you are getting it are you getting measurement of uh, height uh, like 5 6 7 8 9 10 or you are getting it like uh, 5.1 5.1 uh, to 5.5 5, 5, 5. 6 and 6.1 6.23 something like that you are getting de some decimal term decimal term when you are measuring height so that means simply you say that the value height it is taking value from interval not like taking value from discrete set like 5 6 7 8 9 10 like something like that or simply it is not like that 4.5 5.5 6.5 like that if you talk about the height of person will fall between 5 to 5.5 uh, 5.6 to 6 then 6 to uh, 6.5 something like that so what are those those are intervals likewise if you are going to measure weight of uh, person then what kind of weight you will observe you will observe someone is having height uh, uh, sorry weight uh, 40 uh, 44.51 kg then 54.9 kg something like that but it is not like that someone is having height that 40 kg 50 kg 60 kg no further decimal extension there would be decimal terms so here regarding height weight kind of point it is these uh, are taking value in continuum fashion these are not taking value in 
descriptive as an. These are taking value continuum in fashion. Yeah, uh, at uh, small level we can say that we are having just countable number of person, that finite number of person. Like in, in this a student, in this institute, a student may, might be around 500 or 1000 at most. Okay, 1000. So we can say that discreetly that uh, count. Uh, that high count of height and weight are discrete in nature. But if you talk about through measurement approach, it is taking value in interval wise. Okay, so these are what? Height and weight are continuous kind of. If you are associating uh, random variable with height and weight, these would be con uh, continuous in nature. These are taking value in continuum fashion. These are taking value from intervals. So that's why these are continuous random variable. So if uh, we are having a continuous random variable, what is meaning of continuous random variable? I had mentioned that omega is no, it is no more a countable set. It is uncountable set. That means it contains continuum patterns. That means it contains intervals. Omega is contains interval. Okay. So the distribution pattern of continuous continuous random variable is always characterized by a, a probability density function. Why? Because you are taking uh, things from interval. So in, in interval you can't uh, go through discrete fashion. You have to talk interval in a large, in a hall. You have to talk interval in together, all points in together. So if you're talking together, so density word is coming there. What is the density of that interval? So density, it is dense or uh, uh, dense, uh, uh, densely populated or densely or rarely populated, something like that. That kind of concept is coming. So you will talk about uh, probability per unit length there. So you are length of the what is unit it is coming unit you are defining uh, uh, numbers are distributed in, in, a, in a big interval so you have to convert into unit wise uh, inter sub intervals so you go with uh, how the numbers are distributed per unit length per unit length uh, so that's why how probability is distributed uh, how that means what is the density how points are densely distributed in that so we will talk about density per unit length but we are we are talking about probability probability of uh, probability of distribution of the points so we'll talk about probability density function okay are you getting meaning of that or not so that is the situation so here the probability density function we are defining it like this way it is not defining only for one point we we are defining for uh, some kind of interval sub interval kind of things so we are taking a random variable x which is taking value between x and x plus delta that means we are having a, a x is taking value from omega x okay on omega s has been divided into various sub interval each sub interval is having length delta if you call this point is x then this point would be x plus delta so that kind of situation so if you are taking a random variable which is observing value between x and x plus delta then what is the probability per unit length that term we will call it uh, density probability per unit length are you getting meaning of this are you getting meaning meaning of this or not so this f of x is talking about probability per unit length then how we define probability per unit length we define it by uh, probability that x is observing value in the interval of length delta divided by the corresponding length and here uh, uh, probability coming as a similar to derivative derivative by first principle delta here it may be as small as possible as small as possible like derivative uh, uh, what does deriv physical meaning of derivative or geometrical meaning of derivative Deri derivative of function at a point slope of slope of what slope of what slope of curve or slope of something else yeah tangent. Uh, so there is a curve we draw a tangent and uh, at, so tangent means that line uh, tangent is a line that will touch the function at a point if it is crossing that uh, given function at two point it will be no more a tangent it would what would be it would be second second it would be so tangent is just it is touching at a point so derivative at a point x of a function we call it it is slope of the tangent at the point x slope of the point so how we define it that we define it in a similar way limiting value 
limit uh, delta as small as possible approaching to zero. Okay, so limit limit of the probability that x is observing value between x and x plus delta divided by delta. This infinitesimal limit we call it density. Density of the corresponding random variable at a point x. So when we are talking about at a point x, x we are defining it by limiting thing. And what is that? Why? Because due to continuum nature of x, we are defining this one continuum. So if you loosely willing to uh, say what is f of x, loosely you will say that f of x is approximately this ratio, probability per unit length. Approximately. Approximation is coming. If you remove the limit, approximation is coming. Similar to derivative of uh, function. There uh, that you talk about Taylor's theorem or Taylor polynomial. First order approximation if you talk about first. So simple, similar to first order approximation of Taylor theorem. Okay. Uh, a function, first order approximation, it is coming. So you can say that uh, probability that x is observing value between x and x plus delta is approximately what? Density at point x time width of the interval. Width of the interval. Okay. So such that the density will satisfy three all the three properties. First is density is always greater than or equal to zero. Do you heard that density is having negative value? Density can't be negative. Density of a body can't be negative. Okay, and uh, this would at most uh, actually at least it would be continuous or piecewise continuous. Piecewise continuous is also talking about continuity uh, uh, simply. Okay, uh, then second property is that uh, if you talk about uh, uh, totality of uh, the density. If you integrate from minus infinity to infinity, it would be equal to 1. Why? Anyone say why? Do you see here probability term? Do you see any probability term here? If you multiply fx with dx, what does it talk about? fx times dx is probability of observing numbers between x and x plus delta x plus dx, x plus dx. What is the probability that? It is fx time width of the interval. What is the width of the interval? dx. And this dx width is what? Infinitesimal width. We call it infinitesimal width. That means it might be as small as possible, but positive quantity, as small as possible. Okay. It is just our convention. It's silent kind of convention, what we talk about. Okay, so what is the probability that the points are in this interval? That one is fx times d of x. And you are talking about totality of proba probability. That means you are summing probability through for all possible value of x. But x is taking value in, interval, uh, in continuum fashion. So summation would be not here. What would be integration? That means if you talk about totality of all points of x, that means you are integrating from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So that's why if you integrate the density function from minus infinity to infinity, what would be the integral? Integral it is normalizing property that will be equal to one. And the third one is talking about comp uh, process of com computing process of probability of an event B. That means if you are saying that X is observing value uh, only from the given uh, uh, subset B, what does it? How will compute the probability by integrating the f over B only? It is computing process. So again, it, it is having uh, same properties in line with probability mass function, but all uh, summation has been replaced by integration. So that difference you observe. So very simple example, I am taking it here. If you are taking uh, your set uh, B, may be any kind of uh, interval kind of thing. It may be finite interval or it may be infinite interval. If suppose B is a finite interval, that means a closed interval AB. Okay. Then how will compute the probability that x is uh, 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 taking value within this interval? How will compute? It just becomes an integration from A to B, integration of the density function from A to B. And how we write integration, uh, if you try to see in plus 2, integration we generally compute it through summation, limit, limiting value of the summation. That means we take the interval and we subdivide into n number of subinterval n is totally our choice totally our choice we can refine a n as possible as much as we like we can refine so that means we can say that n is approaching to infinity if you are refining keep on refining n then what you will observe that that partition will be merge up to give the complete 
interval okay so this kind of thing so if you are trying to recall it you can recall it like this way okay so you are taking so just this one is very much essential this uh, approach so x is taking value along horizontal axis the density is taking value along vertical axis and we are willing to compute integral of f so what is meaning of the, that so f is a density function it, it would be something like this we are saying it then computing integral means finding the area under the curve that everyone might be aware of that and here x is taking value between a to b so how will compute that area the greek technology approach say that first you uh, divide the given interval ab into sub intervals of equal width you can go for uh, non equal width uh, that would be complicated one so uh, you are dividing it like this way so in that process what you observe the first point we call it x not we denote it by x not x not equal to a the second partition point the we have we have actually introduced partitioning x1 the third we will call it x2 you will go like this way and it will go go like this way what would be b we will call it xn so tell me how many points are there when we do partition of the sub interval how many points are there how and how many uh, partition sub intervals are there so how many points are partition points or nodal point node points also you can call it how many nodes are there how many partition points are there n plus 1 points partition points or you can call it nodes actually node word is not common here in uh, integration we generally call it uh, points partition points and how many sub intervals are there n sub intervals second how many sub intervals there are n number of sub intervals n sub intervals so what are those sub intervals we can call it i1 i2 uh, i3 up to in intervals i think this uh, i might have discussed in continuous probabilistic modeling so similar thing is coming but here integration is coming into picture in the last case we haven't seen integration but here we are seeing integration so what we observed actually we have uh, divided we come up with a partition of a uh, interval ab we come up with partition of interval ab as what how it is coming union of uh, sub interval first uh, sub interval is x0 to x1 then union second sub interval that would be x1 to x2 and it will go up to the last sub interval which would be in it would be 
x n minus 1 to x n. Okay, so tell me this point you can call it third point. So, if you have partition the given interval a b into sub interval this sub interval you can call it i 1 i 2 up to i n. Okay. So, sub interval so how you will compute the area? What is the simplest way to compute area? Under the curve, which object is having very easy to compute area? If you take rectangle, if you take rectangle, what is the area of rectangle? Height into width. But does do you, uh, do you see here after the partition, what you observe here? This is the first uh, partition of the area under the curve. This is the second partition this is the third partition and it will come on. Okay. So, do you see that whether this partition of the area, partition region, whether these are rectangle, whether it, these are rectangle, these are not rectangle, these are, rect, uh, these are actually region between two kind of rectangle. There are two kind of rectangle. What you observe? One is under rectangle, another one is another one is over rectangle. Do you see here? Are you able to see or not? So, there are two kind of rectangle. One is under rectangle, another one is over rectangle. If you take a very generic kind of continuous function and you are trying to partition the interval of the uh, that domain, domain of the function into sub intervals, then you uh, you try to get uh, uh, sub region, sub region, and those are look like uh, rectangle, but not rectangle. So, we try to approximate it by two a special kind of rectangles. One is under rectangle, another one is over rectangle. So, we can compute the area of all those uh, under rectangle and over rectangle, and the actual area under the curve would be between those two under rectangle and over rectangle. Some of all uh, those area. So, in that case, uh, you can come up with uh, in if you are taking so f of x, uh, it is talking about sometime it would be under rectangle, sometime it would be over rectangle. Area of under rectangle, sometime it would be over rectangle. But when you are taking limit n is approaching to infinity, it will approach to the this area area under curve. If you are taking n is approaching to infinity, then this summation will approach to, approach to the desired integral. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, that can, kind of thing is coming here. So, uh, in calculus, you will come up with Riemann integration. That time, you will come to know in more much detail. So, simply we are saying that we are computing integral by limiting value of this summation. Okay. And suppose, if your interval B set is a complete R, that means it is taking value from minus infinity to infinity, then, uh, then what would be probability? It is just by computing the density, uh, computing the integral of density function from minus infinity to infinity and we know what is value of this one? It is equal to 1. We had already seen from the property of uh, density function, probability density function. And if we, we take B is a singleton set, that means we are integrating density function from A to itself. What is the integral of a function from A to itself? 0. So, simply if you are saying that when x is a continuous random variable and x is observing a single value, single value, then what is the probability of observing that single value? 0. When x is, remember that in case of discrete uh, random variable, probability of a single value might not be 0. But here in case of continuous random variable, probability of observing a single value is always 0 always zero. That difference you will see in continu uh, continuous random variable. Okay, I think uh, density might be clear to everyone. 
that we probability density function in short we call it pdf probability density function okay so we will go little bit uh, more in detail like uh, uh, how many type of uh, density would be possible the simplest generally we start with uniform density how uniform density what is meaning of uniform density that means uh, uh, we have already expressed uh, probability that x is observing value between x and x plus delta as approximately equal to f of f of x time delta so if you are going in situation like that uh, probability if you are observing in two different sub interval with same width and that one is equal uniform equal probability that x is taking value in first sub interval of length delta or width delta and probability that x is observing value in another uh, interval sub interval of length delta both sub interval is having length same delta and so that we are taking uniform law that in both having the same probability what does it imply if delta is same it will say that value of density in the first sub interval at x i point would be equal to value of density at x z so simply what here uh, you can prove it here this how you will write this this quantity it is approximately equal to uh, f of x i time delta at uh, this quantity is approximately equal to f of x j time delta delta and we say that probability that uh, x is observing value between x i and x i plus delta is same that uh, probability that x is observing value between x j and x j plus delta that means these two quantity are same that means delta uh, delta will cancel out or finally what we will observe f of x i equal to f of x j that means at the both sub interval density is same are you getting meaning of this oh, okay i am right now i am talking about computing density at partition point only but suppose we are taking a scenario that we don't have uniform law with uniform density if suppose f of x j x i is not equal to f of x j then it will simply say that probability that x is observing value in ith in sub interval is not equal to probability that x is observing value in j th sub interval if you are having so this one is non uniform law this one is uniform law probability density under the uniform law this one is probability density under the non uniform law okay so, so consider a random variable so what what you got it from from this what you got density is everywhere same for un, under the uniform law density of a random variable is everywhere same in the omega x for a uniform law under the uniform law and if you are coming non uniform law density would change right now we will study only uh, uniform density under uniform law and that density we will call it uniform density probability density so consider a continuous random variable with the following probability density function f of x equal to 1 where when x is observing value between 0 and 1 and it is taking 0 so this density is what kind of density when x is observing value between 0 to 1 density is same everywhere at every point what is that value that one is 1 and it is 0 when x is observing value outside the interval 0 1 that means there is no density there is no points okay there is no points so uh, what we say that we can say uh, graphically we can denote it like this way so here x is observing value between 0 to 1 okay one take here so point are densely populated in between 0 to 1 it is densely populated in such a way uh, that this uh, denseness of the spreading of point between 0 and 1 we denote it by height it is having height we give height so what is the height height is this is the height so this is this one is densely populated and outside the interval 0 1 do we see, see any point of x 
do we see any observation of x under this first example we don't see any x x is not taking any value outside this one that means there is no height height is zero height is zero so what is height when x is observing value between uh, zero and one height is one height so these are densely populated point so very lot of points are there here lot of points are there and uh, outside the interval 0 1 there is no point so that's means there is no height we are not getting if no point means uh, the population is zero the population of uh, points are zero uh, population of point is zero so zero height so actually the denseness of point we denote it by height we are th this one is taking a numeric value that we denote it by so this is the height and that height we call it value of uh, probability density function okay and it is it is a legitimate probability density function why this one is always greater than or equal to 0 f of x is always greater than or equal to 0 it satisfies for first property second property if you integrate this density function from minus infinity, infinity to infinity then we know that from minus infinity to 0 this density is taking value 0 and from 1 to infinity this one is also taking value 0 that that means f of x is taking value non, non zero value only between 0 and 1 so this integral is limited to integral uh, from 0 to 1 and and that density is taking value 1 what is that uh, integration of 1 it is equal to 1 okay so uh, that's where it is uh, this given density is satisfying normalizing condition as well and likewise uh, third one is just it is talking about way of computing uh, probability of an event so now we talk about second kind of uh, uh, example that one is non-uniform density so take a density like this way so we are suppose we are having a continuous random variable which is having having density 1 by uh, twice of a square root of x so what kind of density this one uniform and non -un or non-uniform what kind of density this one it is a non-uniform density it is you will see that height of the density at every point is not same it is changing so this density we call it non-uniform so we can't say that f of x1 equal to f of x2 we can't say that here so easily if you plot the uh, graph of this density it is how does it look like it is hyperbolic in nature no it is coming something like that this kind hyperbolic kind of things 1 by uh, twice of a square root of x so it is hyperbolic in nature here it is uh, the density is having different height here density is having different height and x is taking value from where to where just we are limiting x is taking value between 0 to 1 in order to normalize it to probability density function okay so you can see that this density is always greater than or equal to 0 second if you integrate this one so integration we have to limit it from 0 to 1 okay so what is integral of this one if you simplify integral equal to it would be equal to 1 okay and second is this way of computing probability of an event some specific value of x okay so this one is a non-uniform density this one is a uniform density any question till now any question so you can say that the second example is coming from uh, this category and the first one is coming from the first category uniform probability density function second one is coming from the second category non-uniform probability density function so we will talk about various specific continuous random variable or and corresponding continuous probability distribution okay what are those the simplest one is coming through uniform continuous random variable that we have already discussed and the, then we will talk about exponential continuous random variable so uniform random variable that means uniform continuous random variable if x takes value in an interval a b under the uniform law that means all sub interval remember that when we say the uniform law under continuous pattern then we will come to in sub interval wise not point wise point wise is not possible to discuss in case of uh, continuous random variable because here uh, probability of a single point is zero what is meaning of discussing that then so here we will limit up to sub interval wise we take interval subdivide or partition into sub intervals n number of partition will and we are dividing in such a way all sub interval of the same length are equally likely uniform law in continuous case means 
all sub interval of equal length or same width are behaving in a same pattern okay are equally likely uniform under so in that case what is the density of x probability density function of x it is 1 by b minus a if x is observing value between a to b and when x is observing value outside this one it is taking value zero this height is uniform height what what we call it uniform height and so that it becomes a probability density function the plot we can see that x is observing value only between a to b in uniform pattern that means the point which are distributed between a to b are having uniform distribution they are continuously distributed that means we can't say that there is a gap between any two points in the interval ab those are distributed and then how distributed then those are uniformly distributed what does it mean it is having same height it is having same height what is the height 1 by b minus a and outside interval ab it is having zero height why because there is no density of points point is not distributed outside ab so density is zero you can see it so this is a plot of uniform density uh, uh, yeah uniform density now if you talk about exponential uh, uh, distribution and corresponding exponential uh, uh, distribution so if x takes value in interval 0 to infinity okay and which decay exponentially that probability density is decaying exponentially how decay is happening when x is greater than equal to 0 decay lambda time e to the power minus lambda x this is the exponential decay okay then that kind of random variable we call it exponential random variable and the corresponding probability density function we call it exponential distribution exponential density we call it exponential density and plot you can see it like this way it is having exponential so this one is non uniform kind of probability density function so it is exponentially distributed it will decay down to zero and it satisfy all the properties of being a dense a probability density function being a probability density function you can see that integral would be equal to 1 from minus infinity to infinity you don't have to go from minus infinity to infinity just you have to integrate from 0 to infinity why from minus infinity to 0 the density is 0 so by default integral would be 0 in that segment just we have to worry about 0 to infinity and 0 to infinity integral this one is having unit integral now the most important continuous uh, random variable is uh, normal random variable and the corresponding distribution is normal distribution what is meaning of that what is meaning of that so everyone might be aware of that if you are uh, computing uh, length of uh, various objects then definitely or uh, some kind of measurement if you perform some kind of measurement always you definitely there is a possibility of error many a student measuring many different different quantities so if i talk about what is the distribution of error then you will be not able to answer rightly but next i will say that i will ask what is the distribution of total error then uh, in some book you will see that it is normally distributed normally distributed so the our approximately normally distributed you don't know the distribution of individual error how it is distributed but you will always assume to say the amaze to see that the distribution of total error it is approximately normal in nature so it is very practical kind of uh, distribution and another gauss came up with this distribution so you can call it gaussian distribution as well so uh, a normal distribution it takes value from minus infinity to infinity using a symmetric gaussian function this one is symmetric gaussian function with two parameter mu and sigma square later we will come to see that mu happens to be mean of the x and sigma square is the variance of x later we will see that so we are taking a random variable x which is taking value from minus infinity to infinity under the probability density function this this term we call it uh, normalizing term this one is so simply you can say that it is power minus x minus mu whole square divided by twice of sigma square so this we call it normal distribution what is the plot of this one it is very symmetric about zero mu sorry mu if mu equal to zero then it would be symmetric about okay 
and it is spreading how a spreading is happening through uh, sigma a square root of sigma a square that means sigma so you will get uh, if you move rightward you will say that mu then next point would be mu plus next uh, mu plus sigma and then mu plus twice of sigma then mu plus thrice of sigma you will keep on walking rightward and leftward walking is mu minus sigma why we have taken sigma sigma square is a square quantity and mu is not a square quantity linear quantity so a square root of a square quantity is a linear quantity what we call it that's why a square root of sigma square we have taken that we call it sigma and name of sigma we call we can call it a, that one is what a square root of variance a square root of variance we call it a standard deviation so there is no need to define it again it is directly coming from variance so if you move uh, leftward you will get various deviation we call these are deviation from mean this one is the first deviation mu plus delta rightward then next second deviation will be mu plus twice of delta mu plus thrice of delta likewise uh, first deviation towards right mu minus delta second devi division towards left it would be mu minus twice of uh, sigma and it, you will keep on deviating so you are deviating from mean and this is the plot of probability density function of uh, normal random variable or simply you can call it normal distribution plot of normal distribution it is very much symmetric about mean 50% leftward 50% rightward very much symmetric in nature mean is this symmetric uh, midpoint so here if you are someone is asking what is the mean and what is the median and what is the mode of a, a symmetric distribution or normal random variable it is the same all three points would be same here so next uh, thing we will compute expectation of continuous random variable then we will come back to various special kind of uh, continuous random variable later first let us talk about expectation of continuous random variable and various distribution function then so expectation is uh, expectation of continuous random variable it is generalized from uh, expectation of discrete that uh, we replace the summation by integration why because in place of uh, that discrete function probability mass function we are dealing with continuous function probability density function so that's why summation will be replaced by integration so what is the expectation of a continuous random variable it is uh, you can say that this weighted integral weighted integral x time f of x and again you will say that if you look into these these two terms f of x and dx what is this one it is probability of observing x in the in uh, length or in the interval of length dx so again you can say that expectation is a weighted integral of x weighted integral of x the weight is provided by this quantity okay are you getting meaning so here uh, not i am not using weighted sum i am saying weighted integral here expectation of x is weighted integral of x a uh, weight is provided by the corresponding density okay and the uh, uh, okay you know likewise variance is what it is expectation of a square of mean deviated random variable so as per expected rule you can say that it is uh, this integral it is this integral like uh, uh, expect, expected value rule we can call it here that means uh, expectation of a square of x minus expectation of x expectation of x okay once you will be able to compute expectation then you will lead to what to compute uh, variance of x and if you simplify further it is taking uh, if you simplify from here directly it is taking the form of the famous formula that in last case we we had discussed expectation of x square minus a square of expectation minus a square of a 
expectation same formula it derivation directly you can get it from here that derivation we had already seen that someone is willing to in der uh, derive from this uh, uh, this expression you can go for that as well so here you need to uh, smartly deal with integration here you have to deal with in integration so that would but here directly you don't have to deal with there is no worry about probability mass function or probability density function directly you can describe just apply the algebra over here uh, a minus b whole square formula and uh, smartly apply expectation over uh, those three terms of uh, expression of a minus b whole square now we will individually compute expectation and variance of various uh, uh, continuous random variable. If you are taking a random variable x which is uniformly distributed between the interval a and b, uh, between the interval a b, okay. So, this is the first terminal point, this is the last terminal point. So, it is simplest way to denote uniform random variable which is taking value between a and b in, under the uniform law. So, what is the expectation of x, uh, this uniformly distributed random variable? That means you have to integrate the density. Uh, weighted x time uh, density from minus infinity to, in, to infinity, but we know that uh, f of x is taking non-zero value between a to b. Outside a to b, it is taking zero. Okay, that means this integral is just integration from a to b, and what is the density from a to b? It is one by b minus a. That means we are just integrating the function x. What is the integral of this one? If you simplify, you are getting the expectation of x is midpoint a plus b divided by 2 midpoint of the uh, intervals because it is very much it is uh, from the plot you can easily visualize uh, the, this is a plot of density and x is observing value between a to b okay and it is having uniform height this is the uniform height. What is the height? 1 by b minus a. So, under the uniform law, what is the uh, mean? Mean would be the middle point. Middle point. What is the middle point? a plus b divided by 2. That is the mean of uniformly distributed continuous random variable. And what is the variance? you have to find a variance of uh, x under this uh, formula that means you have to integrate uh, a to b uh, of what is the integrand x minus mu whole square integrated the integral is b minus a whole square divided by 12 this is the variance of uh, uniformly distributed random variable between a and b okay Second, if you take you are taking a non-uniform uh, discrete random variable, uh, sorry, uh, non-continuous uh, random variable with density uh, twice of x when x is observing value zero between zero to one and it is taking value zero when x is observing value outside the interval. So you have to see the plot of the density. Always draw the plot of the density. What is the plot plot of density? It is linear function from zero to one. What is linear function? It is twice of x. That means it is leaning more towards vertical axis. So it is, it is going like this way. Okay, and I am putting here one. So this is the this height. I have plotted it for x equal to one. Okay, and this is the density. So you have to find the this area. Uh, expectation uh, this area would be equal to one. What is the height? What is the height? Maximum height would be what? What is, what is the maximum density? Where it, it will have maximum density at two. Okay. So two you can identify that. Now, we are willing to compute as a expectation. So, that means weighted integral x time density of x. x time density is twice of x. So, x into x, x square and 2 will come out of the integral. So, integrate from 0 to 1. What is the integral? It is 2 by 3. 
where is the point 2 by 3? Is it midpoint of the interval 0 to 1? No. In the last case, we have observed the midpoint is the expectation, but here midpoint is no more expectation. What is expectation? It is more towards 1, more towards right, rightward. So, 2 by 3 will come here. Why? Because we observe more dense height of density more in towards when you approach towards 1. So, that is where the expectation is more towards 1, it is more leaning towards 1. Uh, okay. So, and what is the variance? If you compute variance as per formula, it would be 2 by 9. This is the variance. Okay. Now, uh, once you have already computed uh, expectation and variance, so expectation and variance we and probability density function and probability mass function, those two different different terms for uh, two different kind of random variable, continuous and discrete. Now, we will talk about unification of uh, unification of random variable that do we have any common uh, way of probability distribution to describe both kind of random variables? Yes, we are having that we call it cumulative distribution function of a random variable. So, whatever uh, uh, random variable whether it is discrete or continuous, the definition of cumulative distribution function at uh, faster scale it would be same. How we define a cumulative distribution function? That means, uh, it is talking about define as probability up to that point. Cumulative distribution function means probability up to that point, up to that point, up to word would come. In. So, the cumulative distribution function of a random variable, whether it is discrete or continuous, we do not have to focus on that. It is defined as probability that x is observing value up to x, small x. That value of cumulative distribution function x, as x we uh, define it, probability that x is observing value up to x. Now, later we will compute uh, this probability up to x in a different different fashion, in discrete fashion and in continuous fashion. If x is discrete in nature, that means we are summing the probability mass function for the value of x that observing up to x. That this x should not come here, x is varying up to x. Okay, up to x. We are taking upper limit is x. We are summing that we are, we are summing the probability mass function up to x. Likewise, we are integrating here. If I should change the argument t, we are summing t. Okay, like here t. Uh, likewise. Uh, if x is continuous random variable, that means we are integrating the density, probability density function up to x. That means it will start from minus infinity. Okay. And we are integrating the density function up to x. That is meaning of computing cumulative distribution function for this continuous random variable. And if you are summing the density probability mass function for discrete random variable up to x, that one is computing probability cumulative distribution function for discrete random variable. So, uh, there are various uh, pattern that if you are taking a, a Bernoulli random variable, that means it is a discrete random variable, it is taking only two value, either 0 or 1, 0 with probability 1 minus p, 1 with probability p. Okay. So, it is taking just two value, I am asking what is the cumulative distribution function for this Bernoulli random variable. So, as per definition, we will say that that uh, cumulative distribution function at a point x, it is defined as x is observing value up to x. Okay. So, there are three scenario. Three scenario will come into picture. One scenario will come here like this way. Before 0, after 0 and before 1. After 0 and before 1. Third scenario is after one, one onward. So when x is uh, actually talk about x is less than zero, what is the probability mass function? When x is less than zero, what is the probability mass function? It is zero because x is not observing value uh, before zero. 
so protein mass function would be zero so value of uh, cumulative distribution function would be zero when x is observing value here this scenario is x is observing value uh, after zero but before one when x is observing value uh, after zero but before one in that situation how many value x is observing in this situation how many value x is observing only one value x equal to zero only one value now x equal to zero when x is saying that x is taking value between zero and one after zero okay after zero before one so x is observing value only one value p of x equal to zero p of x equal to zero what is the property of p of x equal to zero property of it is one minus p so value of cdf in short uh, cumulative distribution function you can call it cdf value of cdf at x it is equal to one minus p when x is taking value between zero and before one what is value of cdf when x is taking value greater than equal to one in that case x will take uh, observe zero also will observe one so you have to talk about total probability up to that point so p 1 minus p plus p what is the value 1 so cdf is 1 when x is observing value greater than equal to 1 so remember that cdf is always at least piece wise continuous jump would be there so this is the cdf so up to 0 cdf is taking value 0 okay when uh, x is observing value between 0 and 1 cdf is taking this jump there is jump at x equal to 0 okay what kind of jump this one this one is this uh, here cdf is a uh, discontinuous function what kind of discontinuous function it is jump kind of discontinuous function a jump is what leftward or rightward leftward or rightward if you define jump then uh, it should have some kind of jump point which jump point you are taking it rightward you are the, you you see here dark circle so right rightward rightward jump is there and here also at x equal to 1 it is taking this jump so the maximum value of cdf is 1 minimum value is 0 it will take value between 0 and 1 so this kind of situation is observing okay now if you take uh, geometric random variable second random variable uh, third sorry third uh, we haven't discussed this geometric random variable geometric random variable uh, we have discussed in continuous random variable in a discrete random variable we have so we will compute uh, cdf cumulative distribution function of geometric random variable and the probability density function of geometric random variable is what we had already seen that that one is a 1 minus p to the power x minus 1 time p we had already seen that now we are willing to compute cdf the probability up to x how it is coming so there are various scenarios then when x is observing value less than 1 what is the probability do you observe any probability 0 uh, why x is counting number of trial there is 0 trial uh, what is then if zero trial you are not performing any trial then probability would be zero so corresponding cdf would be also zero if x is between one and two but before two in that case you are talking about in first trial you got success x is counting number of trial till first success x equal to one that means in first trial you got success what is the probability of success p so value of cdf at uh, when x is between one and two it is p if you take x between 2 and 3 what what does it mean probability you have you are summing uh, uh, when x is taking value between 2 and 3 so when x equal to 1 probability is p when x equal to 2 what is probability 1 minus p into p you have to sum all this okay this is the value of proba probability sum of probability up to uh, x okay and like we likewise there are various branches it will go on so it is 
in large if you try to see uh, various jump you will observe various this kind of this one is a probability density function of the geometric random variable uh, geometric like uh, uh, one if, if you throw a ball the height will fall in geometric manner that height you can replace it by probability mass function similar thing is coming okay but probability is taking value between 0 and 1 height may take any value any positive value okay so if you are going just for positive height then you have to normalize in order to convert into probability that you know that uh, so this is the cdf you will see that so what kind of pattern you observe so it is like this 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 so in uh, till now we have seen jump kind of discontinuity continuity in the cdf now this jump it will be something much more uh, okay 